8th Mission, March 24th, 1945. We dropped our supplies and we started heading out and our ship got hit with something that was new, it was pretty heavy. For the young men and women of the United States, the Second World War created opportunities not only to serve one's country, but for youthful ambitions to become a reality. For Robert Vance, the goal was to fly. I tried to enlist in the Air Force, and at the time they weren't taking any more applications for cadets. I was drafted. Uh, I got drafted into the U.S. Army. I, uh, Assigned in in Columbus, Ohio on March 10th, 1943. I was in the uh, 78th Lightning Division in North Carolina is where I went first. I was in a uh, weapons platoon of a rifle company. I had a light machine gun squad. But I always wanted to fly, so I decided I'd put in for cadets. So that's how I got out of the uh, infantry. Robert was finally accepted into the U.S. Army Air Forces and began training in radio school. But it wasn't long until a more enticing opportunity caught his eye. One day I saw on a bulletin board where they needed gunners for the Air Force, so I volunteered for gunnery. And I went to Tenderfield, Florida, took my gunnery there, went up to uh, Westover Field, Massachusetts, and that's where we got our crew and we did our transition flying there. I started training in B-17s, and then I, we switched to uh, B-24s up at Westover. I was a system radio operator and gunner, flying the tail turret and the waist in different times. I was in the 506th Squadron, 44th Bomb Group. At the dawn of 1945, Robert and his crew were on their way to England. Nearly two years since he was drafted, Robert's training was about to be put to use in actual combat. Well, we went to uh, Shipton. We were a uh, replacement crew for the 44th Bomb Group. And uh, we flew out of there to uh, over Germany. Most of them are not that bad. Some factories. The German Air Force was almost extinct. Our main thing was flak then. A lot of it. I remember going over Berlin once. We were flying along there. And black smoke everywhere from the anti-aircraft. bombs and I remember looking out and saw a guy floating down in a parachute. I felt sorry for that guy and whether he made it or not or gone down to all that with the flak and the Germans sparring at him. I hope he made it but his uh, luck wasn't too good there I don't believe. Yeah, that was a tough mission. On our eighth mission, March 24th, 1945, we were dropping supplies for the advance across France and Germany. We dropped our supplies and we started heading out, and our ship got hit with something that was new. It was pretty heavy. And I knew when we got hit that something was wrong up forward because 
We got no response from them, no alarm went off or anything. So some of those must have been hit too. Then we noticed number four engine was on fire and one of the guys in the back with us so opened the Bombay door and flames come leaping out at him. On that mission, Louie and I were in the waist. We looked out the waist window. We saw Sergeant Diaz. He fell out of B-24. We saw him fall out and hit the ground and bounce like a rubber ball. And there were reports of that that he had a parachute on, but I don't recall that. And we were looking right at him. Poor guy. What a way to go. Well, before long, we uh, were hit the ground, bounced off the ground for about 50 seconds, and then went in and crashed and was still burning. Two of us were thrown clear, and then the thing exploded, killing all seven others. Only Robert and waist gunner Louis de Blagio survived the crash. After bidding a final farewell to their fallen crew, the two men made their way through German territory. But it wasn't long before they fell into enemy hands. And we were captured, uh, I believe, the next day. And then they took us out and started marching us towards a wooded area. I figured, uh oh boy, this might be it. Because we'd heard of them shooting some prisoners. We still had our 45 pistols. And so they took our 45s. They wanted Louis to disassemble one. So he did. Then they wanted him to put it back together. But Louis said, no. they told him he forgot how to do that. He'd be lying like a fib. Because we knew how to take them apart and put them back together blindfolded. But he didn't want to be shot by his own pistol. <laughs> but they turned us over to a, an artillery outfit who was hiding in the woods. So we all, in, all ended up in a hospital in Germany uh, near where we were shot down. In the following weeks, back home in the U.S., Robert's parents received a letter declaring their son missing in action and presumed dead. But I can imagine what my mother and dad went to or any other parent. Must have been rough. So we were in that uh, hospital when we saw the P-47s come around the street from the town. So we knew, well, it's getting close to the Germans giving up. And uh, pretty soon uh, we heard the tanks and trucks and everything coming into town. We knew the Germans were about ready to surrender because the troops were coming in. We saw all those guys in the tanks and trucks and yeah, those Americans sure look good coming in there. They look pretty tough, too. A jeep came up behind us and had a sergeant in there with a lieutenant. So they got us an ambulance and they picked us up. I ended up in a hospital in Liège, Belgium, and Louis uh, went to a hospital in Paris. And uh, that's where we separated, so 
I never did see him again until back in the States. His name was de Blagio. He was from uh, Brooklyn. Quite a guy. He passed away a couple of years ago. So I'm the only one left on my crew. After being liberated from German captivity, Robert returned to his base in England and immediately wrote a letter to his parents, assuring them that their son was safe and coming home. About a week or so after they got that, we were uh, shipped out on a uh, convoy going back to uh, Massachusetts. Well, it was pretty nice. You got that 60-day furlough and went on a fishing trip with my dad and two or three other fellows up into the uh, northern part of Michigan. Caught a lot of nice fish up there. Hi everyone, I'm Josh from Memoirs of World War II, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching this episode. Our goal is to capture as many World War II veteran stories as we can from all over the world, but we can't do it alone. If you'd like to help us in this mission, consider supporting us through Patreon, and check out our website in the links below for more information. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. We want to say thank you for your support, and thanks for watching.